And welcome to the River Tuesday, my name's Ruben, and this is my review for The Harder They Fall. When an outlaw discovers his enemy is being released from prison, he reunites his gang to seek revenge in this western. Starring Jonathan Myers, Regina King, Lakeith Stanfield, Idris Ilba, Zazie Beetz. I will be doing an ending explained, or the last few seconds explained, a little bit of spoilers at the end, but for now this is a non-spoiler review, so let's jump into it. When it comes to Westerns, I feel like there's normally a core demographic of people that enjoy Westerns. There's definitely normally a bunch of people that are like, yeah, Westerns aren't for me. But I feel like this director has taken the Western genre, try to make it, I guess, relevant to a wider demographic. Because I do feel like even if you don't like Westerns, you're going to find something to enjoy in this one. Uh, for me, the standout is the way this film is shot. It's spectacularly filmed. It's very creative, probably more so than you're used to seeing in Westerns. It also has a heartfelt story, much more than I was expecting. I mean, this cast is just chock full of amazing actors. But there is a thing that you're going to notice because we haven't seen many Westerns where the majority of the cast for 99% of the movie are African-American people or actors. And I think that will stand out for you. But I have to say, I didn't notice it, but I did notice it. Does that make sense? I thought it just ended up just being a Western. It points out because you see the stark contrast when they do end up in a white town. For the majority, it's African-American actors doing the story that's kind of based on fact, but embellished a lot. And I really like what the director did here with the actors. And I love the presence that some of these actors are able to bring. When you see Regina King on screen, she brings that presence when she's playing the, the technically the bad gang. Um, and the director himself, he said he's really embellished those characters. So the baddies are baddies and the goodies are goodies. But what he's done with those characters is he's heightened their backstory. So you get to care about both sides for the most part, especially as we get to that third part, that ending kind of scene where everything is, is exaggerated. We get to the end of the adventure. It's all of those kind of shootouts where people are falling off rooftops. We're having you know, gun standoffs, trying to see who's the fastest draw in the West. We have all of those cliches, but in a good way. It's kind of taking all the boxes of things you really want to see in a Western and then just adding some flamboyancy to it. Just really amazing creative shots that you're, you're probably might take you out of the film because you might set your back and go, whoa, that was cool. Why did they do that? There's this moment where you see Idris Ilba on screen and the, the effect that goes on around him when you're seeing his character is very, very cool. It reminded me of something that you would see in The Matrix. It's that sort of creativity that you're seeing in here when the camera goes from the back of a room straight through the window into what the characters are doing. The creativity that that's displayed is someone that loves Westerns that is just having fun with the genre. So that's why I think everybody coming into this film, even if you don't enjoy Westerns, you're going to enjoy this film. And what makes it even better is that, like I mentioned at the beginning, there is an emotional story. So it starts off like all good Westerns do with an emotional hook that beat where you're like, oh, now I know who I'm rooting for, who is the bad guy. And so they get into that right at the beginning and then they set up your characters. Like, I know who I'm rooting for, even though he technically looks like he might be the bad guy, kind of. There is a justification for what he's doing, a kind of Robin Hood story. The Nat character is stealing from the outlaws. He's an outlaw stealing from outlaws, but he has a vengeance storyline. And those are always great. And then the stories that are great, those kind of Westerns that have like, I'm, I want a revenge storyline. I'm going to get the guy that hurt me or hurt my family. When you give the bad guys a background story, then it starts becoming meaty. And that's what I felt like we were getting in the story. But it does take some time to, for you to find out on both sides. You kind of have to let the story do what it's doing. There's also a tempo and tone that the film creates within its score. It's a very different score that you're usually going to get in Westerns. There's uh, some modern-ish 
kind of score music and soundtrack that really seems to fit well uh which i was surprised by because it's like i was listening to the score or the soundtrack and i was thinking this shouldn't really go in with the western but it's working here for this moment and then of course you get those orchestra moments that you kind of that's that's heightening the moods embellishing those kind of uh that that zone that you want your audience to be in it's so well edited that it feels like you're experiencing the adventure with them so when you get those emotional beats that you want the audience to feel you do feel them i did feel them i wasn't in tears or anything i was just had a smile on my face for the most of the film even when there was dark things happening because i was enjoying the adventure their ride so when the film is obviously doing a little preachy thing without preaching at you you understand why because it's a it's a if you see the director who who has been asked this question like what why did you feel it necessary to uh, showcase the majority of your cast being uh, african-american he wants to change the perception of where a lot of the westerns have been about i guess african-american people portrayed as the bad guy or enslaved and if you keep having that perception it's going to keep cropping up but here is one of it's not like it hasn't been done before but here is a film that wants to change the perception i think it does do that i think it's a great kind of showcase here you're just seeing a great adventure storyline with great actors and i'm hoping that one day we get to that moment where people just see actors rather than skin color i think that is where we need to get but we're going to need more of these films than able to do that but at no time did i go okay that, that that's just because of color is you know it's one of those films that's a woke film i didn't think that at all it was just a really great western film that is going to be in my top five I, I it was one of those films that when you switch off or you get out of the cinema that you happen to go and watch it again immediately so i am an art about watching it but i wanted to put this review out uh, i may watch it again i thoroughly enjoyed it i thought the performances were good i was emotionally invested the creativity on camera is excellent the score works really well um, and i could stand to see more of these I felt sad at the end. It was a tragic story, kind of like you want with the Western, but it is embellished in places with things that you want to see in Westerns. So I thoroughly enjoyed this. I highly recommend it. I'm giving this four and a half Nicolas Cage's out of five. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below about this Western. What is your top five Western movies? I presume there's going to be a John Wayne film in there and Unforgiven, perhaps Tombstone, I think is probably still my favorite Western of all time. I think Val Kilmer and that is incredible. Maybe Young Guns for me and maybe this one might crop up in there. I'll have to kind of whittle them down. I am going to do the ending explained now so that that was my review so if you don't want to hear about the, the kind of talk about the ending then uh, now's your time to kind of hop away thanks so much for watching okay so right at the end we see our two kind of couples the the four characters that are left that have survived they're splitting up in direction uh love is now the name of the couple they're kind of live happily ever after even though we've just had that reveal that uh he had to kill his brother that it was his brother the, the idris elba character so we know and understand why he was doing what he was doing so even though he was the bad guy there was a history there of violence before the father turned good. And so we have them going off into the sunset. We now have a new deputy. I loved her character. I thought she was excellent. Um, obviously, we have the marshal and they're going off into the direction. But as the credits start to roll, we see the silhouette of a character holding a not typical cowboy hat. It's more of a bowler hat uh, and we know that that is the character from the Regina King character. So we didn't see that character die. We saw her more knocked out. Um, I'm guessing she's going to have a fractured jaw, a few missing teeth. So we could now have a sequel to this. And I know people might go, well, just leave it one and done. I understand that could be a great way to leave it. But often you do get Westerns that follow a few storylines. Sometimes you have a sequel or an unofficial sequel where there is a, a reverse kind of western revenge storyline we've wanted that one from kill bill with the daughter for ages so it is possible to do sequels well as long as there's a good storyline but i would love to see more from this world that they've created there'd have to be a very good reason and a good story i hope there's more to it so let me know your thoughts below whether you want a sequel thanks so much for watching this but most of all until next time remember live long on tuesday <laughs>